Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome back on this cold and wet and miserable night for some exciting nerdy talk. How good is this? I'm here tonight with my best buddies, MPS and Jeffro. Lads, how are we all? Good. good dude. How's everyone else? All right, so our next segment, MPS, the year that was. Over to you, sir. Oh, geez, I thought I'd get a break tonight. Obviously not. All right, so the year that was, 1984, and we're not talking about the George Orwell 1984, nor are we talking about the year, well, we are talking about the year that my sister was born, so there you go. There's there's the one and only event in my family that was interesting in 1984, apparently. Uh, but what did happen? We did have a few bigger things than that in 1984. First of all, the Olympic Games was in Los Angeles uh, in July, and that was the... Oh, what's my Roman numerals? The 13th Olympiad, if XX111 is 13. Uh, that's 23, dude. XX113. Right, oh, yeah. 10, 10. I got my X's and my V's wrong. That's it. All right, so the 23rd Olympiad. Um, Britain uh, and Ireland's top musicians um, uh, did the song Do They Know It's Christmas for the Band-Aid uh, Famine Relief in Ethiopia. Technologically wise, the first Apple Mac uh, was uh, went on sale, and guess how much that thing was back in the day? Millions. Two thousand dollars. How much? Two thousand. Oh, a little bit higher there, Jeffro. Oh. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five. Two thousand five hundred dollars for an Apple Mac. So and that's nine eighty-four dollars too. Yeah. Yeah, that's so that, was, that commercial, that pay for that commercial they showed at the Super Bowl, it cost so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, which apparently is classed as one of the greatest commercials of all time, too, from what I read. Um, a couple of interesting things happened uh, space-wise. Uh, the very first untethered spacewalk uh, in the shuttle Challenger, uh, which happened in, in about February of that year. And, uh, and the guy who did it. The astronaut who did it was like Fred Schmirk and like they untethered him and like, see, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the guys goes, watch this. This will be funny. I'll just let him go and see how far he goes. And they were like, oh, shit, he's, he's gone. Actually, um, his name is Frank Poole for those who like uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. You go on. <laughs> Sally Ride becomes the first American woman in space on the Space Shuttle Challenger. Uh, and Discovery had its maiden voyage in August of that year. Uh, also, the first transatlantic solo flight, uh, Colonel jo Joe Kittinger uh, becomes the first person to complete a solo transatlantic flight in a helium balloon. You know, surely there's got to be easier ways to, to travel the, the world than a hot air balloon. Uh, in terms of toys and games, here's a couple that were very popular in the day. My Little Pony, the one for all the girls, and... Now, if <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, uh, My Little Pony is a thing where there's conventions and all sorts of stuff, and there are people called bronies, and they're big, burly men who are into My Little Pony. It's not something that you see uh, every day, and it's not something you want to see every day either, I think. I've... You can imagine the image, couldn't you? you got the big, burly guy on top of the pony, and the legs just gone... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to say yes and just leave it at that. There are too many other images because I've seen some of these guys and... Move on. Uh, yeah, move I'm going to move on. Care Bears became a thing. Uh, <laughs> if you remember Care Bears, you had your little white uh, tummy with their colourful um, insignia. It was a heart or a, 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 a cupcake or whatever the case was. Uh, the other thing that came out was a ColecoVision console. If you remember ColecoVision, it was the next sort of version after the Atari. I think it was probably the Atari um, competitor at this this sort of thing. And the controls were, were were rectangular with a little wheel at the top and your buttons down the bottom sort of thing. Uh, that went for a mere $130 back then. So fairly cheap considering. Uh, Care Bears were, were $9 
and My Little Ponies were five. So, and I remember back in the day, a He Man figure cost about four dollars, and I think a Star Wars figure cost what a dollar ninety nine or something. In eighty four, yeah. yeah, they were throwing them away. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Uh, popular musicians of nineteen eighty four. Um, a couple here are my favourites: uh, Billy Joel, uh, Kenny Rogers, Bruce Springsteen, Stevie Wonder, Duran Duran, Ultravox, UB40. I don't know where UB39 and all the way down to UB1 are. Uh, Billy Ocean, Wham! With "Wake Me Up Before You Go." Um, no. Well, it says just go here, so. <laughs> okay. um, Tina Turner with "What's Love Got to Do with It?" Just before she did the. Uh, the big one for uh, under Thunder, uh, Beyond Thunderdome, Phil Collins and Alison Moyet, who she was an Australian artist, if I recall correctly. Um, and I believe, for what I understand, that she lived not far from me in Springvale back in the 80s. Where she is now, I have no idea. Uh, TV shows, some of the popular TV shows of the time were... Some of the boring ones. We're not talking sci-fi at this stage. We'll go boring. We'll go Dynasty, Falcon Dynasty. Crest, Dynasty, Dynasty, Dynasty. <laughs> Falcon Crest, Hill Street Blues, Cagney and Lacey, uh, Cheers, Fame, uh, Magnum PI, one for Daniel. Um, what other TV shows you got, dude? Throw oh, some I the TV shows, but I was gonna. Um, if you've got anything else you want to add in, I'll pass over to Jeffro because I know he's got a couple of movies he wants to chuck in, and then I'll finish off with some more films. I was going to go back to the TV shows. I'll go, I'll just let me run through the TV shows. There was also Night Court, uh, Murder, She Wrote. You should have known this one. V was on in 1984. Yeah. Uh, what else was there? Let me see if I can get this to work properly. Um, while um, you're doing that, um, yeah, H has mentioned that, uh, yeah, UB40 was named after the UK unemployment form. So there you go. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Scarecrow and Mrs. King, Miami Vice, Blue Thunder. Now, Blue Thunder was based on the helicopter, which was uh, chasing what was happening in 1984, Airwolf. So there was the Blue Thunder, which was the blue one, and Airwolf, which was the cool one. Mm. It was the boss, the A-Team, uh, Punky Brewster, uh, Auto Man, which is another one of my favourite shows back in the day, which you can buy on DVD, and we will do a presentation on that soon enough. Uh, one of the... Um, Breakaways from Happy Days, Charles in Charge. Uh, what else have we got up there? Uh, the Master, which was a ninja show with Lee Van Cleef from 1984, which also has a very, very young Demi Moore in it. Uh, Simon and Simon, St. Elsewhere was still running. What else was there? The Love Boat, which went for donkey's years, essentially. Um, or oh, there's one with Jim Carrey, which I read really wrong there. It's called Duck Factory. I read it the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I hate that when you put the letters from words in front of the other ones. Um, Remington Steel, the fall guy, was still running. Uh, what else was there? Muppet Babies. Uh, and I'll probably leave it at yep. that TV shows. Cool. So, Jeffro. You got a couple of movies. I've got a list of movies, but I'm sure you got a couple you want to chuck in for good measure. Actually, apart from Buckaroo Bonzo, there's nothing else I really want to mention the way I'm moving. <laughs> I can actually uh, add to the television list. So uh, I will go across the, the continent and go for the uh, the UK television shows because uh, MPS pretty much covered all the, uh, the, the American ones pretty well. So, you know, um, I'm skint on that. But on the uh, UK side, we had spinning image so um i do believe there's talks to reintroduce that as a new series uh very shortly so that'll be interesting to see how all that um takes after what you know 30 odd years or was that 40 odd years uh, 40 no, 36, odd years. 36 years uh now on the completely opposite side uh there was a a mini series called threads that yep. dealt with the possibility of nuclear war Gee, was that a scary nightmare, you know? Yep. You watch that and you'd be waking up screaming. It was that um, realistic and, and scary. Um, the Young Ones also started in this um, in this time and that revolutionised the, uh, the type of comedy that we saw on uh, television. 
and that led the way for all the guys that were in that one to be able to sort of uh, establish their own careers. Uh, on the science fiction kid side of things, the John Wyndham series um, or novels, uh, Chalky, that came out uh, in this year. That was a, um, uh, a production I remember quite well, and they made a series uh, sequel to that one. Robin of Sherwood, that was a big one that uh, I remember in this year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was actually a really good telling of the uh, the Robin Hood uh, legend, and it led to future versions of Robin Hood sort of coming out, but that was really well done. The Tripods, uh, that was a television show that had a huge budget that was financed by both uh, French and uh, UK concerns, and... Um, supposedly sort of wiped off a lot of the uh, the budget for Doctor Who because uh, the BBC co-financed it. So they suddenly found themselves a bit short on Doctor Who. And, of course, Doctor Who in 1984. Mm -hmm. And just throwing in all the uh, the last things, cartoons, one of uh, NPS's specialties, we had Transformers, Inspector Gadget that we mentioned um, in the Hanna-Barbera one, Danger Mouse, also to do this year, He-Man, Voltron, Dragon's Lair, based on the, um, the the arcade game, and Super Friends. So that's my um, my list of 1984s. Thank you. Wow. Well, I was looking up uh, movies now. Last week when we did 1995, there was a million billion films that came out in 95, and I thought, well, who would have thought there were so many sci-fi sci movies? Who would have thought there were so many uh, that were being released? Well, as it turned out, in 1984, off the top of your head, you might think of a couple, but there was a bucket load way more than i thought there was so i haven't got time to go through all the buckaroo bonds of course the legend of legends as far as jeff is concerned that's definitely up there but of course terminator came out in 1984 so the very very first terminator movie where it all started was back in 84 um a classic movie which i really enjoyed was starman uh with jeff bridges and uh karen allen uh, which was actually very, very cool, very enjoyable. PJ would know this one, Strobe Lighter, the old last Starfighter. He's probably mentioned it somewhere there in his uh, comments. So uh, the beginning of the whole digital CG sort of spaceship sort of effects thing, it all sort of found its um, uh, its introduction there. Dune, of course, my old favourite. We've got old um, David Lynch, absolutely awesome. The year is 10,191, don't forget that. Um, 2010, uh, the year we made contact, which we mentioned a couple of uh, episodes ago on, on our show here actually came out uh, that year as well, which was kind of groovy. I never liked the idea it was called The Year We Made Contact because the book was called um, 2010 Odyssey 2, and I always thought that was a better title, but, you know, whatever. Uh, of course, 1984 came out in 1984, and there's been a few versions of that, and that was the um, Richard Hurt. Um, Richard, um, what was his name? Shit. Um, John Hurt. Uh, what, who? John Hurt, John. thank you. John Hurt version, yeah, which I haven't actually seen. Apparently, it's a bit on the nasty side. Um Film a little bit little left of centre, a little bit different for the time. The Brother from Another Planet. And you can uh, uh, sort of make of that what you will. It was actually very, very cool, apparently. Dreamscape came out that year, which was apparently quite nasty. You would have seen that one, Jeffro. Um, uh, Night of the Comet, an ex-girlfriend of mine, was a huge fan of this film and ended up watching that as pure 100% 80s. So uh, absolutely with the hairstyles. And she was a fan of playing the game Tempest. And I used to love playing Tempest, the arcade game, uh, back in the 80s as well. Repo Man. Very, very famous one, very cult classic came out that year. Good old Supergirl. Dun 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 yep, yep, the female version of Supergirl came out. Star Trek Three, The Search for Spock, having a whale of a time in the future. If, well, the past effectively, if you know what I'm saying. Runaway, uh, as we mentioned, uh, I think a couple of episodes ago, the first time we see Gene Simmons from Kiss without his makeup. Oh, and he played a bad guy, and he was a pretty good bad guy too. Had guns that could have bullets that would follow people around with uh, Tom Selleck, still had the moustache, straight out of Magnum P.I. Um, Ice Pirates was out that year as well. Um, Philadelphia Experiment, uh, which I'd mentioned a couple of episodes ago that I'd actually watched not that long far back. Uh, Toxic Avenger. You yeah. are right. It was a 70s movie, but you are right. It definitely did come out in the 80s. Uh, and, of course, in 1984, uh, Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call Ghostbusters? Came out that year. That was the start of a whole trend of movies uh, regarding that. Chud. Is it, what was it? Cannibal something or the, uh, I can't remember. Underground uh, Dwellers or something like that. So um, I'm sure somebody's going to write it down there as to what it means. Uh, Warriors of the Year 2072. Yeah. You reckon that was a straight-to-video movie? 
I'll tell you what. <laughs> I bet it was. And some of these were. And that was the thing. This was the uh, like in the middle of the D, uh, the video, the VHS, um, not the VHS necessarily, the STV, straight to video revolution. And uh, as Jeffro will remember quite well, video stores were chock full of these movies that only found their way into video stores. And that's the reason why they became so popular because people would hire them for a dollar for a week. And no matter how crappy they were, people would say, well, I haven't seen it. What the hell? I'll give it a bill. So there you go. Um, yeah, Kremlins. I know somebody's already mentioned that already. Caravan of Courage. Mate, how do you like it? Ewoks, bit of yub nub action. Hey, eh? how good is that? The best scene in Caravan of Courage is when the Car Caravan of Courage is when the three Ewoks punch each other up. It's like teddy bears having a big fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it just for that. Um, a movie called Starship, never saw that. Lensman, never saw that. Return of Godzilla, he was back again. So there you go. How good is that? And uh, two last ones. Um, so one film that you definitely had to watch in 1984. This would have been an STV if ever there was one. Bloodsuckers from Outer Space. There you go. <laughs> Get that India. And they weren't vampires, they were zombies. Oh, there you go. Um, but the biggest thing at the start of the show, I said something happened in 1984, which was like the, the coolest thing of the lot. Uh, 1984, I joined fandom. So there you go. I joined uh, the community in October the 14th. Um, actually, it was about the week after that. It's October the 20th, uh, 1984, and I became part of the community. And I'm still here. Oh, my God. So there you go. So, yeah, bucket loads of movies. How good's that? And the non yeah. and the non sci-fi ones that came out, which people might remember, uh, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Beverly Hills Cop, Karate Kid, uh, Police Academy, there's a fun one to watch, uh, especially on video. If you go all the way to number seven, you, you kind of lose it a bit. Uh, Romancing the Stone, Splash, Armadeus, uh, The Killing Fields, and another one, I'm not going to go through the rest of it, but another one that was a cartoon which was part of the Hanna-Barbera range was Challenge of the Go-Bots, so the cheap-ass Transformers, you know. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that's what they, were. they changed in about three moves, you know, Transformers were already... And these were just, yeah. uh, and you just sort of cheap ass transformers. Yeah, Very good. I still had a couple. So um, I like how yeah, Colin got it right. Yeah, cannibalistic humanoid, um, whatever it was, underground dwellers. Yeah, I never saw it. You know, I had better things to do that. I was out going out. I was partying back in '94. Jeepers creepers. So. There you go. So 984 had definitely, definitely had a lot in it, which was very, very cool. So there you go. All right. So anyway, look, it's time for us uh, to uh, finish up on this cold and wet and miserable night. Uh, we did get some feedback in regards to uh, a different day for this show to be on. Uh, so the lads and myself will discuss our options and we'll see where the wind takes us. In the interim, though, it's a Friday night. Go back to bed. Curl up with a good nerd and um, watch some TV shows and whatever else. And we will leave you all to it. So until next Friday when we're back again, at least we're on Friday for the time being, stay nerdy. There you go.